Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, Nina tries to make a deal with Cyrus, Christina helps Sonny recognize his mistake, and Adam overdoses. Christina stops by her father's office to visit him. They embrace, and he says her timing is excellent, he wonders what he owes the visit to. She wanted to check on him because he had a lot going on and make sure he was all right. He says he's all right, but she knows he's not, and this is exactly where she should be. Sonny said she has one of the greatest hearts he knows, but assures he is oak. He has been through a lot, and it's difficult to hold him down. Christina accepts, considering him her rock, but is concerned that he will go to prison for beating Cyrus, Sonny recalls his chat with Dex about Cyrus and assures Christina that he won't go to prison since he has a family who needs him. Sonny claims he's gone through far worse and survived. Christina understands, but she's still concerned that he won't be available when she needs him. Sonny says he'll always be by her side, but she has to know she's capable of doing things for herself. Christina admits she never imagined herself as a surrogate for Molly and TJ, but he has finally helped her gain confidence in herself. Sunny assures her that Alexis deserves praise as well, and that she should never doubt her abilities. Christina learns he and her mother have been conversing, and Sunny explains that Alexis has simply been concerned for her and Molly. Christina still gives her father a lot of credit, and she admires a set of principles he lives by. She claims she witnessed it become stronger as a result of his time in Nixon Falls, which she blamed on Nina. But she now realizes she was mistaken. She claims she liked Nina a lot, but she was so vicious in going after Carly. Nina ended up getting nothing she desired, and it cost her everything. Sonny recalls beating up Cyrus and telling Dex to kill him. Sonny explains to Christina that sometimes individuals are blinded by their own grief. Christina says she understands. She's the queen of lashing out, Nina couldn't see the proper road, but he always keeps his eyes open. At the hospital, Dex observes Nina enter Cyrus' room. Cyrus is excited to see Nina, but she is not pleased to see him. She lashes out at him for lying about being a priest and damaging her marriage and bond with her daughter. He says it would have come out anyhow, and doesn't she feel better now? Nina claims she doesn't. He admits that the truth hurts, and now the healing process can begin. She accuses him of taking advantage of the situation to retaliate and harm Sonny. Cyrus vows he has nothing against Sonny and only intended to help her and Sonny soothe their pains. If her marriage is failing, he apologizes. She suggests that if he is truly sorry, he should make atonement and drop the charges against Sonny. Cyrus claims that he has no law enforcement authorities, but as Sonny's victim, why shouldn't he seek justice? Nina antisses him, saying, I can give you something you want more. He admits that sometimes accepting a tithe is acceptable. Meanwhile, Dex changes into scrubs and receives a text message reading, On my way. A nurse approaches and asks if he's lost, but Dex insists he's not. She realizes he isn't wearing a badge and inquires as to his identity. He claims to be a temporary orderly, that this is his first day, and that he left his phone in the locker room. She asks him to switch off his phone because he can't use it at work. Later, Dex notices Nina leaves Cyrus' room. He misses a call from Sonny, who tells him to call the hit off. Laura approaches Ava outside the courtroom at the courthouse and requests that the charges against Esme dropped once more. Ava refuses to dismiss the charges, because Esme deserves to pay for everything she did to her and Trina. Laura claims those are different charges. Ava receives a call and exits to take it. Laura walks into court and asks Esme how she's doing. Esme acknowledges she'd prefer it if Spencer came with Ace as promised. Laura is confident that they will arrive soon and she needs to focus on herself. Laura understands if Esme blames her for her current situation, but Essen claims she is the one who has made a mistake and must beg for a miracle. Laura believes she can prepare for Martin's arrival. 
Martin chats with ADA Lansing Davis about a bargain for his client, Essen Prince. Molly says she admitted to the crime, and the matter is closed. Laura explains that Esm handed herself in because she is suffering from memory loss and made a mistake, and that there was no serious damage to the property or anything stolen. Martin urges his sister to give him room while he handles things. Martin informs Molly that he would encourage his client to plead not guilty, resulting in a trial. He claims Essen will take the stand and tell her story through tears, and jurors are sensitive to those held captive. Ivo runs into Trina in the hallways and is pleased to see her today. Trina claims she was able to speak with her father following his surgery, and he told her to focus on her future. She updates her on her trip to Paris with Spencer, and Ava is overjoyed for her. Ava confesses that she brought these allegations in Esm to finish this chapter in her life and move on. Uncertain, Trina claims there is still a child involved, and if Esm is imprisoned, that youngster would lose his mother as a result of her actions. Ava claims Esm is still the conover she always was, and she needs to be able to move forward without Esm on her shoulders. They rush in as soon as the court is called into session. In court, Esm is asked how she pleads. She pleads guilty, and the court knows a deal has been reached. Molly has committed to six months of probation with no arrests. Alva is enraged and walks over to Laura, demanding to know what happened. Laura claims she advocated for justice. The judge sentences Esmond to six months probation, and Alva accuses Molly of a mockery of justice. Molly claims that this was a minor crime, that going to trial would have been inconvenient and expensive, and that justice was served. Molly goes away, and Alva assures Trina that the situation is far from done. Meanwhile, Esme praises Martin, but he tells her to thank Laura. He cautions her that she is on probation, and that if she does anything further, she will face jail time. Laura later advises Esme that now that she's on probation, she should put the past behind her and focus on the future. Esme says she will. Laura receives a call and must leave due to duty, but she will return shortly. Esm, alone, turns around to discover Trina standing there. In the dorms, Joss repeatedly knocks on Adam's door until his roommate replies. He claims Adam is not here. He took his guitar and some vodka and went. Joss hurries off. Joss discovers Adam in the park, strumming his guitar and drinking vodka. She knows he's angry with her, but she can explain herself. He says that what has been done is complete. She is concerned about him, so he asks her if she is his buddy and then simply leaves him. She refuses to leave him since she is a friend. Joss manages to take the bottle away from him and insists on getting aid. Adam claims that nothing matters anymore, he is always unhappy, and she has no control over that. Joss confesses she doesn't have the same problems as him, but someone out there understands him, and he should speak with them. He says it doesn't matter and then passes out. Joss discovers an overdose of over-the-counter medications in his pocket. Joss phones the paramedics while attempting to awaken Adam. Joss watches as paramedics arrive to take Adam to the hospital. More, Bobby's half-felt memorial episodes. Spencer is taken aback by his father's arrival at Laura's house. When Spencer brings his father in, Nicholas compliments him on his appearance. He appreciates Spencer for stepping up and taking care of Ace, rather than simply giving him over to his grandmother. Spencer knows his father has been keeping track of them. Nicholas laments because he had to leave, they would have imprisoned him, but he never ceased loving him and Ace. Spencer wasn't sure how he felt about him, given that he was blackmailing him over Ace at the time. Nicholas claims this was extremely Cassidyne of him. Spencer has envisioned every possible outcome for this meeting. Nicholas knows his son despises him, and he deserves all he gets. Spencer tells his father, There's only one thing left to say. I am sorry. Nicholas is stunned. Spencer believes he knows Ryan and Heather are Esm's parents, and that Esm and Ryan manipulated him to inflict anguish for his father and Ava. He was so enraged at the time that he let them in. Nicholas claims that he created this opportunity for Esm and Rian, and that he damaged his marriage by sleeping with Esm.
Spencer can see that his father is regretful, and Nicholas is eager to do anything he can to make things right. Spencer goes on to remark, like abandoning your newborn son so you don't go to jail. Nicholas admits that he abandoned Ace, but he also abandons Spencer again. He knows he failed as a parent, and he can't change the past. They had their moments, though, and some of his best memories come from when he was younger. Spencer cries, saying that he was his entire universe and that he adored him. Nicholas claims he still loves him and will never stop. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.